Oh, man, so Bitcoin up 0.7% here on a Saturday. And I'm going to update you on this big move that is setting up right now. Could this be the Bitcoin pump that takes us up to 26,000? Or could we get rejected from this and be looking at revisiting previous lows? This is a critical moment right now in the Bitcoin chart. I'm going to be showing you all the key levels. So make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, these videos are brought to you by Bybit and BitGet, two of my favorite exchanges, which I use. Links in the description. Check them out. You've got Bybit, where I place a lot of these trades, as well as BitGet, which also features a great feature called copy trading. So check that out. If you guys aren't the most experienced traders, you can jump behind other experienced traders and take a percentage of their returns of their PL. Uh, great, great feature. Definitely something for you to check out. BitGet also offering you 10% cash back as soon as you deposit. So you deposit with them, you're going to get 10% of whatever you deposit straight back into your wallet. Absolute no brainer. Right. What are we seeing here on the Bitcoin chart? We've spoken about this a little bit over the last couple of days. We are forming this very big head and shoulders pattern. Now, I've been quite pessimistic about this pattern simply because it's so damn obvious right? When things are so obvious in, in uh, technical analysis, oftentimes it sometimes fails. And because every single person has noticed this head and shoulders pattern, that kind of reduces its probability of success. So I'm being very, very cautious with this for that reason. But nonetheless, we do have our breakout, right? I'm sitting here on the four hourly chart. We do have a number of four hourly candles now above the neckline indicating a breakout. But as you can see, the gradient of that breakout and the lack of volume is also concerning. Okay, so you can see these are the things that are concerning right now. One, this is not a steep enough breakout. You would like to see something like that penetrating above this pivot high. And also you wanted you would have wanted to see an uptick in volume during that breakout as well. The fact that you saw a downtick gets you a little bit, little bit um, concerned about the breakout, right? You get a little bit, you have a bit of suspicion whether it's a fake out and you could be then f therefore falling back down to lows. Now, it, this pattern is really important for a bunch of reasons. One, if we can achieve this breakout and confirm it, we could be running up to a technical price target of about 26,000 here on Bitcoin, which brings you towards your 200 EMA ribbon. That's this one here, okay, which is very, very interesting. Now, if we lose it and we start heading back to the downside, we'll then go to test 20,000 again. And if we lose 20,000, we could be heading back to the head pattern here, the previous low of 17,500 roughly. OK, so really important battle that Bitcoin's fighting right now. And we need to give it the time to decide which direction is it heading in. Now, I've entered this trade. I entered this trade on the confirmation of the breakout, but I'm going to scale it up as and when we get to this specific point. And the specific point I'm going to show you is I'm just switching over to the hourly to make it a little bit clearer, is this previous pivot point high to the left-hand side. And as you can see, that's sitting at about 21,700. When we can break beyond there, I, I will scale in my trade. Now, keep in mind, you will also get a bunch of resistance coming in from this point here, which is the next pivot point. So that pivot point here sits at 23,000. You're going to get a bunch of resistance there, but don't be concerned. We, you just scale your positions as and when you start beating each of these resistance levels. Now, the other thing worth noticing with this type of breakout is you can get rejected from the 21700 okay you could get something like this which is called a retest now at this point i won't get concerned if we can show a signs of a bounce like this that would be really good in fact for the longer term target of getting towards 26 this kind of a setup here would be much better in fact where you go back down you get rejected you create some support and and at this point when you see the green start to bounce you can ladder in your position uh, to build your position even higher for the run-up because you get more conviction once you've gone back in, you've retested, you've turned the neckline into support now, and now you can run to the upside, okay? So very, very important. Now, one more positive thing about this trade before I speak about a few of the uh, macro elements, which are really, really important as well. When you look at this trade, <clears throat> if I bring out the EMA ribbon, this is particularly important because on the four hourly chart now, over the last couple of hours, we have finally turned our four hour EMA bullish. And this is huge news, okay? Because one of the things that had me wary about this head and shoulders pattern was just like here where we got rejected from our EMA ribbon. You can see here after we formed the head, we got rejected here. And I thought perhaps we could see the same again. So this move here, yes, it took a while, but the fact that now that four, these last two four hourly candles have closed above the four hour EMA, you can see this one particularly, nice green candle above the four hour EMA ribbon, gives us a sign that we've turned bullish. And that's really, really good news. Because remember, once you bounce the four hour EMA ribbon, chance of you going for a nice extended move to the upside increases. So that's working in our favor. 
<clears throat> okay, so if you guys want to trade that, go ahead, buy a bit. Links in the description, get up to $4,000 in bonuses. BitGet, another great platform for you to trade this, but please be very, very careful. Only do so with a bit of lunch money or pocket money and do not get yourself wrecked. I do not trade with margin or leverage. I simply take these trades on spot. Okay, let's keep things moving. And as we can see, Fit and Greed Index is starting to notch up a little bit. We've gone up to 14 now from, from lows. Uh, we had 11 yesterday and last week we had lows of up to six. Okay, so definitely we're seeing a little bit of an improvement here. And we're seeing that as well in the wider market. We spoke about dominance, right? Dominance was falling over the last couple of days. And that's because a lot of retail are still piling into alts. Now, I gave my view on that. I'm not piling into alts right now. I don't think that's the right move to have, particularly when we have no clear sign of when if inflation is going to abate. So with that, medium term, I'm bearish, right? I'm bearish. Doesn't mean I can't trade a small move to the upside. We can, but medium term, I'm bearish. I'm focused on Bitcoin and Ethereum and accumulating those in my long-term position. So hopefully that is super, super clear. Now, I do want to rattle through some of these. Now, some of these, these are the kind of headlines we've got at the moment. So I just want to read these just to remind anybody that's getting a little bit ahead of themselves, a little bit excited, what kind of environment we're in. I'm going to read these and tell me what you spot. BlockFi raises deposit limits, eliminate free withdrawals. Investors pile into short Bitcoin ETF, betting on prices to fall. European crypto exchange Bitpanda cut staff by hundreds. FTX in talks to acquire part of BlockFi. Flowdesk raises 30 million to expand trading and market services. Convex Finance sets up new URL after Webster addresses hacked. Binance launches new VIP platform. Coinbase uses in Netherlands to face additional KYC. From all these headlines, there were only two mildly positive headlines. The rest are job cuts. There are people shorting Bitcoin. There are hacks. This is the kind of market we're in right now. So it's very, very important we zoom out and understand what is going on. Let's take a look at this. Goldman Sachs also leading an investor group to go and buy the assets from Celsius. So yep, Celsius have been completely silent right now. People have still got their funds locked here in Celsius. Yes, and we don't know what's going to go on. Goldman Sachs is trying to raise two billion in commitments from a bunch of investors, but what investors are going to sign up to this, guys? I can't think for me what kind of investors are going to want to go and buy the assets of Celsius right now, unless it's at a super, super penny on the dollar amount. In which case, people won't get their money long term back, and it's just a big hoo ha uh, for the for for people to be scooping up cheap assets, right, from Goldman Sachs's best friends. So yeah, not a great news story there. Grayscale. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust GBTC discount narrows with the ETF decision on the horizon. So guys, this this ETF has been trading at a 34% discount just about uh, about nine days ago or so. And now it's sitting back here at closer to 20, 29%, okay? So 29%. Now, some people are saying this could be because people are starting to buy GBTC ahead of a potential announcement to convert the GBTC into an exchange traded fund or ETF. Now, we've been hearing this for a while, but again, we don't know if this is going to happen. There's no guarantee behind this. But for some reason, the market seems to keep getting excited every time they think an ETF is getting closer, okay? Officials from Grayscale and another investment firm, Bitwise, said at Coindesk Consensus 22 conference, which is where I went to, early this month that they are optimistic the spot ETF will finally be approved by the SEC soon. In October 2021, Grayscale initially applied to convert GBTC into a spot, <clears throat> excuse me, into a spot ETF. The SEC has since pushed off a decision, but currently plans to render a verdict by July the 6th. Okay, so not long now before we hear that verdict. The other really big piece of news that came out on Friday, which I mentioned was coming in my video, and a lot of people overlook this. There's a reason that the market was able to close green and finally cap a, a big comeback week, right? A big green week. Uh, NASDAQ 3.34%, 3% on the S&P, 26 This is huge moves we saw on Friday. And that was the Michigan Sentiment Survey. Now, why is this important? So the Michigan Sentiment Survey gauges consumers' sentiment on inflation and whether people, lay people like you and I, think we're going to enter inflation. And the reason that is important is inflation is a self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? The more you expect inflation, the more it comes. And therefore, what happened was the preliminary reading that Jerome Powell saw, they do a preliminary reading, showed that consumers were expecting inflation to increase at a 5.4% clip, okay? This was before Jerome Powell increased interest rates to 0.75. So he had to 
So what Jerome Powell did was he got the CPI reading, he then had this reading, which panicked him, and he increased his rate hike from 50 basis points to 75 basis points. So it's good to see that this reading then, the actual reading which came out, came in slightly lower, not massively, but slightly lower at 5.3%, allowing markets to say, okay, fine, it's not as bad uh, and they're easing slightly which is good it would have been worse if it was the other way and it was even higher than that uh, given that that's what Jerome Powell reacted on so very very important piece of data so there we have it guys that's what we see here on this weekend again no equity markets over the weekend to guide where we're going here on crypto crypto is going to decide on itself does it want to break out will it get rejected by 21,700 and come for a retest or can it go start working its way through don't forget two key levels 21,700 and you've got another very clear level at 20 uh, Call it uh let's just zoom in closely to give you this. I don't want to give you the wrong number. At this pivot point here at the top, call it twenty-three thousand, roughly twenty-two thousand nine hundred. Those are gonna be the key levels on the journey here for Bitcoin to try to run up to twenty-six thousand. Alternatively, if we see a breakdown of the neckline at that point, you want to make sure uh, you guys have your stop losses to get out of your position. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe if you appreciate this content. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments that you watched all the way to the end and that you appreciate these comments. And I'll be sure to reply to all of you guys who made it through to the very end. Don't forget to check out Bybit and BitGet. Links in the description to get yourself set up with the various bonuses that I have got for you guys in the description. Go watch this video. And I'll see you in the next one.